Hello and welcome. This is Lockdown TV from Unheard. So for the past few days, the atmosphere here in London has felt a little bit different. We've had a bit of a spring-like feeling in the air, lots of people out and about, and there's a bit of a sense that people are starting to take life back in their own hands. Uh, well, one person who seems to be taking his own decisions is headmaster David Perks, who is founder and head teacher at the East London Science School. Hi, David. Hi, hi. So you made the papers in the past few days um, for refusing to obey government guidance around face masks. Tell us the story. We're coming back to school on the 8th and, and um, Boris announced that uh, all school children should return to class on the 8th. But in order to get that to happen, he also then announced uh, a few circumstances which uh, would try to, from his point of view, make that happen, one of which was the introduction of face masks in lessons as guidance uh, to all schools. Um, and that's something that I just felt was just like utterly, the, it's just completely upside down. If you're, you're going to bring the kids back, we want face-to-face -face teaching. Uh, and unless you do that, then what actually are we doing? And so it just it didn't didn't make much sense to me, and and I know our kids are desperate to uh, get uh, you know in, into class and get taught, uh, and the teachers are really really keen to get them back in class and, and teach them, and then to then say that we we recommend to put face masks on in lessons just felt completely the wrong thing to do and the wrong thing to say uh, for lots of reasons. So I just felt I had to pipe up and say something at that point. So what was the rule before? So at the moment when you had lessons previously, they weren't wearing masks, but they were wearing them in the corridors. Is that right? And now the guidance has changed so that pupils are actually supposed to sit there for hour upon hour with the face mask on. Is that what's happened? That, more or less. I mean, um, the whole thing uh, is, is difficult because uh, the idea of social distancing itself in, in schools is problematic and, and quite tricky. And so therefore there's a kind of sort of compromise going on in terms of, uh, you know, what, what can we actually uh, get, you know, get to work sensibly in a classroom. But the one thing that um, remained kind of unquestioned was the idea that you ought to be able to talk to each other without you know, using face masks or anything like that uh, in in um, in the in, a, in that classroom situation because it's it's just going to inhibit the entire thing, and we've we've just been doing months of Zoom lessons where the the big problem you have with children is they won't turn their cameras on, and so like to then bring them into school and then instead of getting on with what you normally do, you put the face mask on. It's it's almost like being back at home in a Zoom session. It's just, it just completely antithetical to, to what we're trying to do. What is the rule now in your school? Will it, will it, from March the 8th, will it be no face masks in class or will it be up to the teacher or will it be up to the pupils? Who, who decides? So we, we just put a letter out um, to the parents basically saying to them that uh, we are fine with the pupils and parents deciding if they wish to choose to wear a mask in the classroom, that's up to them. But we are not going to enforce it. Um, and uh, and also importantly, uh, from the point of view of the staff, I've told the teachers that my advice is that they don't wear face masks when teaching because it's going to inhibit them. And if they have a problem with that or they've got a real worry about it, they can speak to me about it. So it's not they? It's, What's it's, the response it's, been from the staff? I haven't had a single person um, come up to me and complain about anything that we've said. And in general terms, they've been teaching all the way through. We've had about 80 pupils in um, in the last couple of months um, because we look after key worker children and uh, vulnerable children. Uh, and the teachers have been great. They've been really, really good. There's one or two who are definitely scared of, of, of COVID and you know, probably because either they themselves have had it or because they know people who have in their families and I understand that. So if they want to put, if they're in their classrooms, if they want to say everyone, all the pupils wear masks, will they be allowed to do that? No, no that's, not, that's, not, that's not what I'm asking them to do at all. No. 
it's much more the case that uh, we would normally expect that not to be what happens. And therefore, uh, it would be very exceptional uh, circumstances if the teacher were to wear, wear a mask, that would be very unusual. And likewise, I doubt very many pupils will, there'll be a couple. And the, the reason that children do that is not so much themselves, because they're aware of the, the risks and so on, but they're worried about their families. And, and I, I understand that. And, um, you know, that's, that's something that uh, they themselves uh, decide that's what they're going to do, then so fine. Is you your know. objection to this, are you saying face masks may reduce transmission, but you think the effect on teaching is so bad that it's not worth it? Or do you think that you actually, are you disputing the science? Are you saying you don't believe that face masks in class make much difference? W which is it? Logically, wearing a face mask must reduce your risk of transmission of the disease somewhat, right? And I don't dispute that. However, the situation that we face at the moment in, in uh, my school, uh, and we're in Newham, which has been a, uh, you know, right at the epicentre of, of the disease in London, is that uh, you, you, we haven't had a positive test from a member of staff or a child since December. Now, I know that the disease has been r ranging away uh, across Newham and East London uh, over that period. It's, it's, it's petering out now, um, but we haven't picked it up. Why do you think that is? And we've been... Well, there's a couple of reasons. One um, is because in the first wave of the disease, back in March, February, March, my staff were um, exposed to it very rapidly. And a lot of us were ill, including myself and uh, senior leadership team were all ill. Um, and so we have a, a, a degree of immunity that maybe other people don't have right? because we've been through it. Um, and, and with regards to the children and their families, I'm sure there's some, some of that uh, is true as well. So you think a lot of them have had it already, basically? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, um, we were hit like a tidal wave back in the, the first wave of it. Um, it. I had to shut the school before um, the government shut uh, the schools nationally because we literally couldn't, couldn't operate. Um, and, you know, so... Uh, but at, at the moment now, not a, not a sign of it. Some people will watch this and think that you're being irresponsible, I guess. Uh, and let's just try out those arguments and see how you respond. So one argument I think would be, we can't just have a free for all where every headmaster makes their own decisions about regulations because that way lies chaos. What do you say to that? If you read the advice, first off, it is an advisory statement. It is not a mandatory statement. That means it is my decision as a head. Uh, and that is the same for every other head in the country. However, that is not what everyone feels like. They feel under direct pressure because the advice has been given that they should ab abide by it. But, you know, just because someone makes a, a, a pronouncement does not mean that that is uh, correct in and of itself, and I think you have to make a judgment on, on call on uh, everything like this. Okay, let me try another argument on you, Mr. Burke. So, you talked mm -hmm. about how there's pressure, even though it's only a voluntary regulation. Could the same not be mm -hmm. said of the atmosphere in your school now? If you're now the famous teacher who won't insist on face masks, maybe pupils who do have vulnerable parents will feel like, oh, I'd prefer to wear a mask, but Mr. Perks doesn't like them, so I better not. Well, that's just not going to happen. Uh, and it's like, I mean, if you if you want to argue it like that, you 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 feel free to do so. But the point is, we just sent a letter home to our parents, saying it's up to the parents and pupils to decide, but we will not enforce it. That's a fairly you know, straightforward sort of a proposition. Um, and I think uh, the. the the sort of and the only argument against that would be a very very um, sort of tough stance by some people saying, "Well, I'm not going to, to going to go into a classroom unless everybody is wearing a mask." Right? 
but we've all, as I've said, we've already gone past that. We've been doing this for over a year. So to suddenly turn around and say now is the moment where we must wear masks makes no sense. So why do you think they've done it then? I mean, we've been in this situation for a year. As you say, you've been on off opening throughout that year. Why suddenly has the guidance changed, do you think? Well, it's a political move on the part of the government. Um, there's absolutely no doubt about that. It would be, wouldn't it? They're all politicians. But um, I think that the, the, the essence of it is it's like, they knew that the unions were going to make, you know, resist. They knew they were going to resist, and that's the, uh, an obvious problem with the return to to school. And they've tried to make it difficult for the unions to not completely reject the return. And I think they've decided that that's the way they want to do it and, you know up to them they're trying to appease the unions as part of the negotiation mm -hmm. with this absolutely i mean I, I i've no idea how much they've spoken to the unions maybe not at all really i have no idea but you know uh, but they have definitely tried to take their their sort of uh, rug from beneath the, their feet by doing that but it's at the price of a principle which is extremely important in terms of you know liberty and freedom to do what you must do as a teacher which is teach and and it's something that it's you know it, it, it completely strikes at the heart of the relationship between a child and, 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 the, and the teacher in the, in the room if you can't have that relationship then what are we doing right um, and so I think uh, uh, it, 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 it's one of those things where you, you, you take the, the steps you think are necessary tactically at that moment, but the unintended consequences of it are far worse than the benefit you get at, uh, uh, at that point in time. And it's also something that if you lose it now, you lose it forever. You know, it's like you, you can't suddenly say, well, well, we don't do that. Yes, well, you did. Right. So you can't take it back again. So I think it's it's a real, really important moment. You know, it's one of those moments where you think, oops, something's just slipped badly. So by making a stand like this about face masks, what are you trying to do? Are you are you sending a message to other heads? Have you received any messages from other heads saying they might consider doing the same thing? Are you hoping that other schools take matters into their own hands? It is for heads to decide. It's up to them. Uh, you know, that's it is their decision whether they go along with the advice or not. It's, they've still decided it's their decision. So it's, it's not that I'm asking them to decide. They've got no choice but to decide. It's what they decide is the, is the point. The general pressure is to be seen to abide by quite the strictest possible interpretation of the health and safety approach to the, the COVID puts them in a really difficult place. I mean, you know, if you if you are seen not to abide by it, then you're seen to be a risk. That's the way they'll, they'll understand it. And um, I don't envy anybody uh, dealing with that kind of situation. But I also know there are a lot of people out there who think, well, this isn't this isn't sensible. This doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add up. And are waiting or hoping that somebody might open up that discussion a little bit. So if, if there's anything, at least people can talk about it. I mean, from my point of view, if, if people can talk about it, then they can make a decision themselves. If we zoom out for a moment, you are the founder of this school. It's called the East London Science School. It's based on principles of science, on critical thinking. You yourself are a former physics teacher. How has the past year been in that context? I mean, do you feel like the principles of science and critical thinking have been in evidence? I, I am still a physics teacher, by the way. I teach quite a lot of children. <laughs> but um, I think uh, in, in terms of the way that science is used in the public d discussion, um, I'm not particularly happy with, with the way it is used. It's used in a sense to kind of overrule politics, to overrule our decision making, as if it's somehow above that. It isn't. Um, and I think uh, that the way we use science, the way we understand it, and the way we uh, interpret it is very much in the political domain. Um, and so I found it very challenging to see 
the Prime Minister defer to the scientists stood by his side to, to try and understand the situation and what to do. Um, and I think that's breaking down as it happens at the moment. I think it's not as clear anymore. Um, because the decisions you make are decisions for people, right? And, and that's inherently a political decision. Um, and you use science um, to decide things at your peril because it's only one way of understanding the importance of whatever we're dealing with. Um, you know, the classic sort of thing is the scientists on one side and Rishi Sunak and the economy on the other side. They're both extremely important. So would you say that, in a way, the principles of science that you're trying to embody and get your pupils to take on, by standing up like this, you're trying to show them that critical thinking and thinking independently about the available evidence is the truly scientific approach. I mean, is that the, is that the lesson for this week? If you want to understand science, you have to understand what it can tell you and what it does and, and the, 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 the sort of field within which it operates. And uh, it doesn't explain everything. Right? If there's one thing you should know about science is the limits of what it can tell you. Um, and uh, I think... Uh, hopefully, we are learning that and beginning to sort of think, well, OK, science is extremely important, extremely useful. It's our best way of understanding nature and what happens in terms of this disease, right, as a, as a sort of biological uh, problem. But the impact of it, it's not. It's not the same. And that's a different thing. And so you need to put it into a context um, which is maybe more challenging, but it's, it's what we do. It's what we're about as human beings and how we see ourselves and, and how we solve problems. Absolutely fascinating. David Perks, thanks for that. Thank you. A head of a science school in East London, and he is deciding not to go along with the government regulations about face masks in classrooms. Thanks to him for telling his story. This was Lockdown TV.